The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OA Now here. I'm Sammy Termina, blogger of the of around the OAA, um, host of Last Three Brain Cells and host of Between Terminas and Orient Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Orient Neighborhood Television. A lot to talk about this week. Obviously, we got um we got um we got some boys basketball news to talk about, especially at Sophie Arts and Tech. Um also recapping the um Elmer Ball invitational at Oxford, of course, where um a lot of always schools were at this weekend for track and field, and also um, girls basketball. Of course, Birmingham Marion has a new hire in um, Michelle Lindsay taking over. Um, what impact will she bring to Birmingham Marion, and what will that bring to the OAA? So, a lot to talk about this week here on the podcast. Um, um, this upcoming this for this upcoming episode. Um, let's look at obviously, um, you know, let's recap. Obviously, our first story here is going to be the. Um, the Elmer Ball Track Invitational um, that took place on Saturday at Oxford. Um, of course, um, the boys' side was won by Lake Orion with the score. Um, and then on the girls' side, um, Oxford ended up winning that one um, pretty, pretty convincingly. Um, pretty convincingly um, winning that one. Um, you know, oh no, it was actually a good meet in the girls' side with um, with Oak Park. I mean, like. Um, but the boys' side, of course, Lake Orion won it with 107. Adams was second with 80. West Bloomfield was third with 58. Farmington, 56. White Lake Lakeland was 50, and that was your top five um, in the Invitational there. Um, and the women, um, Oxford ended up winning it with 92. Oak Park was second with 86. Um, Ypsilanti Lincoln was third with um, 47. Midland Dow was um, fourth with 46. Um, Farmington Hills Mercy was fifth with 45 and Lake Orion was six with 42 points. Um, so when I look at looking at how the meet went, um, I'm going to go girls first because this one here was a tight meet between Oxford and Oak Park. Um, Oak Park, we know has had the dominance, especially in the hurdle events. I mean, he also got a very good distance runner in Kyra King. Um, when you look at Oxford, Oxford's strength is usually in the field events, especially in the throws, led, of course, by Ariana Hubbard. Um, Elizabeth Bryce has had a nice year this year. They've had others as well that have contributed, but it's clear when you have 20 in an imitational format where if you go, when the points are much different, you have 10 8 6. Five, four, three, two, one. Top eight, get points. And when you have 24 points, you know, from one event, and then you do pretty well in the discus events, that's going to get you a lot of points, especially in a regional format, like what the Oxford Invitational is. So that is a huge, huge win there for Oxford. Um, You know, especially, you know, with, the season they've been having, I mean, on the girls' side, they've got, I mean, like, um, they countered Oak Park's um, ability in the hurdles, obviously, because Oak Park is loaded in the hurdles. Um, and then when you look at other scoring, other scores, I mean, like, you look at, obviously, um, so when I look at this here with Oxford, this is what's going to look like in a regional format. I mean... Oxford could be really dangerous come regional time. You know, I think, you know, they. it would not surprise me if they're the favorite in the regional because of, you know, when you look at where they can, where they can score points. I mean, they have enough sprints they can score. They have enough distance to score. But I really think the field events are going to be the key for Oxford going forward. And, you know, and I think a lot of people, especially in, the, in Oxford, they know it, especially in the girls. That's why they're one of the, one of the top teams in the state right now in girls track is because of, you know, their field events, especially in the throws. Um, let's look at Oak Park. I mean, Oak Park, their girls have had a real interesting season. 
I mean, you know, obviously they got the sprints, they got they got the firepower and all that, but you know, you look at obviously a team like Royal Oak who can um, you know, when they played Royal Oak, that was a very tough meet for them. It was tight between them and the Ravens. Um, I think when you look at Oak Park, um, I think they're getting ready for the um for the regional um coming up and that regional over there at Farmington's absolutely loaded for them. Um I think Livonia Churchill is a wild card. Um well on the girls I think Oak Park, you know, they're the favorite obviously, but Seahome Royal Oak, they're players in that regional. Um but I just think, you know, with Oak Park, you know, I mean they had a really good performance especially you know, they're going to they're gonna rely a lot on their hurdlers. They're going to rely a lot on their athleticism. Um, you know, and I think, you know, that's a good strategy, you know. You know, and that's really worked well for them in the past. And I think that's going to be the same strategy they're going to look at. Um, other teams I was really impressed with there um, at the Oxford Invitation. I was very surprised with Bloomfield Hills um, always scoring 34 points. I mean, like, that... I expected, you know, when you look at Bloomfield Hills, I mean, like, I thought they would be a little bit more, um, you know, a little more balanced. Um, I was very surprised um, with that. I just think that um, with Bloomfield Hills, you know, I, I, I thought they would do a little bit better than what they showed. Um, and then, obviously, I was really surprised, you know, with um, – you know, that was probably much the biggest surprise for me was Bloomfield Hills because I thought, you know, coming into the year, I know they're one of the favorites in the white division this year, but I just felt like, you know, in that type of format, you know, it's kind of a, it kind of was a very off day. I mean, like for them, and that was very unusual for them um, to basically like um, to struggle like that. And, you know, and that's something that I really was surprised with on the girls side. I just didn't expect um, that performance, you know, from Bloomfield Hills, just didn't expect that, um, you know, I mentioned Oxford, I mentioned Oak Park, um, I thought Lake Orion had a good day, I mean, I really thought the Dragons had a really nice day, finishing six, I mean, Elena Tish has been a really good, really good for them, um, I think when you look at the Dragons, you know, they could be, and last year, let's not forget, in the they won a regional, you know, they won a regional. Um, it was a regional they weren't supposed to win, but they won it last season. I mean, I think, you know, when you have a girl like Sophie Novak, you know, that always that helps increase your chances. But um, but I think Lake Orion's a dark horse in the regional. I really do. I really think the Dragons are a dark horse to watch. And they've gotten some nice pieces. Um, they got They got some balance. I mean, like, you know, but Lake Orion girls, that's something to really, really watch. I mean, I really felt like, you know, they had a nice day. Um, you know, sixth place at that Invitational with 29 schools. That's not bad, you know. That's not bad. Um, so, I think Lake Orion's fine right now. I really do. Um, and then on the boys' side of things, obviously, um, when you look at the boys' side, um, I was impressed with Lake Orion's dominance, especially in the sprint in the sprint relays, um, especially the four by two where they had a really terrible exchange. Um, I know one of the um, exchanges, but then the importance of Stephen Brown on that team is you can say he makes up for a lot of mistakes real quick, and what he ran that two hundred meter in the 4 by 2 was absolutely incredible. I mean, Lake Orion, they were 7th in their heat. They were 7th. And then when he um and then when he got the baton, he just sprinted like crazy and caught the entire pack and he ended up winning that he winning that that event, that right the event. He ended up winning it. That tells you something. Lake Orion's deep. They're deep. I mean, Brown and Deed make up the hurdles in the sprint crew. I mean, like, and then you have, and then you have Dorian Hill. You got, I mean, like, I mean, like, there's others on that team. 
And then you look at, obviously, the distance. The distance, of course, we know that Lake Orange has been a powerhouse in distance. Um, field events, obviously, Nick Eaton's done very well for them. I mean, it helps when pole vault's counted, too, for them. So, Lake Orion, I think when you look at the Dragons, they're in a really nice position right now. They're in a really, really nice position to do not only well in the regular season. They got Adams coming up Wednesday. That's a big meet right there. I mean, Adams, they're another team I've been really impressed with. I mean... You look at, obviously, they got some really good runners. They got some good hurdlers as well. I mean, that meet with Adams is going to be really interesting. Um, and then you look at, obviously, in the field events. Obviously, Nick Eaton in the throws. Um, Logan Crocker's been really, has really been, has been really good for them. I mean, Lake Orion's in a really nice spot right now. They are. And you look at, obviously, of course, you know, this if if that Adams meet will be very interesting because Adams we know they're they're very good, they are very very good. I mean, eighty points at that Invitational is not bad. I mean, I think when you look at what Coach Eric Lohr's team has, I mean, they got the hurdles, they got the sprints figured out, they got the field events. Um, I'm curious to see how their distance area is. I mean. That is probably the weakness that I have with Adams is their distance events. But nonetheless, they're still a very good team. I mean, they are a very, very good team. Um, and then others that was, when I look at them on the boys' side, that was really, you know, impressive. I mean, like, obviously, um, I, I didn't expect Oak Park to score only 11 points and take 20th. I did not expect that at all. Because Oak Park, normally, they're normally a power. I mean, they're normally a power. I mean, let's, I know this is the same team that got upset by Royal Oak in the, um, in the, um, in the, um, in the regular season. Same, same team. But I was really shocked with how Oak Park, um, really, you know, point from a points perspective, really struggled. I mean, they only scored 20 points. I mean, really surprised. I mean, that's on un Oak Park like, on Oak Park like. Um, other other teams I was really surprised with. Um, you know, I mean, like, um, I thought you know when I looked at West Bloomfield Farmington, um, I was really impressed with both of them. Um, I really think that I. You know, when I look at West Bloomfield, I mean, West Bloomfield, we know they got the sprints. We know they got um they got some very good solid field events. I mean, they could be a dark horse candidate in the um they could be a dark horse candidate in the um you know, in that regional over at Farmington. I mean, that is a real possibility. So, when you really look at it here, I mean, like West Bloomfield, Farmington I was not surprised with at all. Um, I think Farmington's going to be a X factor to watch at that regional as well. Um, that's something to really, really watch for. Um, and then when I look at other teams, I mean, Oxford, they scored 35 points. Um, North Farmington, 24 points. Bloomfield Hill is only scoring 20 points. That's a, that's, that's a head scratcher for me a little bit. You know what I mean? Because I thought Bloomfield Hills would score more in this meet. Um. You know, and then, um, so when I really look at it here, I mean, like, you know, just kind of surprised at a couple teams. Um, Bloomfield Hills was another on their boys' side, um, scoring 20 points. That was a kind of surprise for me there. I thought they would score more. Um, you know, I was, there's a couple teams I was impressed with. I mean, like, um, you know, but it's so hard to score. I mean, like, in this, in this type of format, I mean, you know, when you look at the regional formats I mentioned earlier, you know, it's not like a regular dual meet where, or a tri meet where in a dual meet, it's, it's five, three, one. You only take the top three places. And in a tri meet, it's five, three, two, one. In a regional format in track and field, it's 10, eight, six, five, four, three, two, one. Top eight. That's the same thing they do at the county meet. It's the same thing they do at the regional. That's the same thing it is at the state meet. 
You know? They use that point system. So, in reality, you know what I mean? Like, um, and I, they also do it at the league meet where, you know, they use that same point system. So, when you look at the league meets coming up in a couple weeks, I mean, obviously, you got, you know, when you look at the favorites, you know, in the red slash white and the blue slash gold, I mean, in the red white, I mean, obviously, Lake Orion has to be one of the favorites of the boys. Adam's another team to watch. On the girls' side, you got Oxford. Um, I think Troy could be a sleeper. Um, so when you really look at it, um, when you look at it, I think it's going to be, I think it'll be, it's going to be, and then and the boy, and then on the blue gold side, and on the girls' side, Oak Park, you know they're going to be favored, but, you know, I expect there's going to be some tight competition from Seaholm. Um, I mean, Royal Oak for sure. I mean, and on the boys' side, you know, I don't know if I could trust the Oak Park right now, but even though I think West Bloomfield Farmington could be your sleepers in that and um in that league meet coming up. So it's gonna be interesting. It'll be really interesting. Um, to see how the final few weeks of the regular season goes when it comes to track and field. It's gonna be really interesting. But like I said, I mean, like, it's going to be really, really interesting to keep an eye on. Um, we're going to go now from recapping the Oxford Invitational. I want to preview the um, coming up, the New Balance Invitational. This one's going to be really interesting over at Farmington. Um, when you look at the teams that are here, um, when you look at the teams that are here, it is a pretty loaded field. Um, when you look at, obviously, you have, Oh, there's a lot of OA representation here. Um, you got Groves, Bloomfield Hills, Clarkston, um, Lake Orion, um, Rochester, Stony Creek, Romeo. Oh, sorry, Romeo's not the only one in my bed. Um, Troy uh, and West Bloomfield in Royal Oak. That's, that's a loaded field. I mean, that is a loaded field. And then you look at Perennial Powers. You got Livonia Churchill there who I think is a dark horse sleeper in the boys that could really do some damage in that region at Farmington. Um, you got Ann Arbor Huron, Ann Arbor Pioneer, Ann Arbor Skyline. Um, the Ann Arbor School is really powerful programs there. Nova Detroit Catholic Central is solid. Um, Detroit Renaissance is a sprint power. Um, Heartland's, oh, Heartland's solid. I mean, like, it's going to be really interesting over at Farmington. It'll be really, really interesting to see how um that meet's gonna go um at the New Balance a lot. It's a heavy loaded field this weekend. I mean, like you know, over at Farmington. I mean, it's going to be just absolutely loaded. Um, for sure to say the least. Um, other invitationals to watch for this weekend. Of course, um, other invitations to watch for this weekend is you got um. You got this weekend, you got the Algonac Muskrat Crass Classic over up at Algonac. Um, you know, I that's where Oxford will be at. Ferndale University will be there. Um, Rochester Adams will be there. Stony Creek is sending a team there. Um, that's another invitation to watch. Um, I really think in that in that invitation, Algonac, it's gonna come down to um, I think it's gonna come down to Oxford and um Rochester Adams. Um, those two teams, really good, um, really stout teams. Boys, I expect Adams will be the early favorite because of the experience there that they have. Um, on, on the boys' side, um, on the girls' side, I think Oxford, obviously, with the experience they got. So when you look at the regional, you know, when you look at, that's another invitation I'll talk about as well. So those are the two invitationals we are watching very very carefully is the um is the one at the new balance invitational farmington and then the one at um then the one up at Algonac. that's something to really really keep a close eye on as we um as we head forward in the middle of the heart of track season we're right now in the heart of it i know we're in the heart of spring sports season already as is um so when you really look at it um I think it's going to be really interesting to see what happens going forward. Um, I was reading in the news the other day about, um, you know, the soft MI prep zones, Matt Maurer. I know him very well. Um, 
released his um top softball players up there. You know, he didn't release his top teams. I didn't see that yet. But, you know, obviously, you know, when you look at softball, South Lion um, is the team to beat. Obviously, they're defending state champs. Um, on baseball, you got Grand Blanca, obviously, on the flip side. You know, but I, I feel like in baseball, I think Lake Orion's got a good chance against them. I really do. Um, and then on the girls' side, you know, when you look at, obviously, the top teams, obviously, you look at a team like Farmington. They're a sleeper. Stony Creek's a sleeper. Clarkston, Lake Orion. Um, Oxford's another one. I mean, like, you know, I think that when you look at those type of teams, could they give South Lion problems? Sure. I mean, but it'll be very interesting to see what happens going forward. I mean, it'll be really interesting to see what happens. Um, let's go from girls. Let's go now from spring sports a little bit to so, to um girls some girls basketball news. Um, I do want to bring this up. Um, Birmingham Marion has a new girls basketball coach. Um, now Birmingham Marion is not in the OA, but they do it. But this move does impact obviously the OA considering we're districts. You know, I mean districts. Were, were they would play some districts in the postseason and all that. Um. Birmingham Mary named Michelle Lindsay their head coach. Um, obviously, um, Lindsay was an assistant under Mary Ciceroni at Birmingham Mary. Um, so when I really look at this hire, um, I, I I think it's I think it's a, um I, I like the hire because it's in house. Um, the transition period I don't think is going to be that hectic. I think it's going to be, I think it could be a smooth transition from Cicerone to Lindsay. Um, when I look at this move, you know, obviously, you know, I think it's, it makes the most sense possible because you're looking at, and I looked at Birmingham Marion's roster before coming in here to the studio and they got a pretty young nucleus. I mean, you know, they lo they lost a lot of experience this year from a team that made the district final against West Bloomfield. Um, they do return a very good player, Mackenzie Swanson. Um, Swanson's been really, Swanson's going to have to do a lot more this year for Birmingham Marion for them to, you know, I think to be where they're at. I know this year they had their, um, they didn't win the regular season, um, but they did win the postseason, the Cat League postseason tournament. Um, you know, and I know that they were motivated to um get get um to have a deep postseason run for Coach Cicerone's last year. For unfortunately for them, it didn't happen. Um, they lost to West Bloomfield in the district final. Um, West, we know what West Bloomfield did. They, they ended up um winning the state title um in Division One. So when you really look at the Lindsay hire, um, I really like the hire. Um, I think that um. You know, Lindsay's going to have some challenges ahead of her. Um, I mean, obviously, you got a superstar in Swanson. Um, I think it's going to do a lot. She, I mean, I've seen her play um, in AU, obviously. Um, she's having a really nice AU year. Um, but, you know, like, like with Swanson, I think it's going to be, if she can stay healthy, I think this team's going to be very good. Um I think, you know, and I think that's going to be where I think with Birmingham Marion, they're a young group, a very, very young group. They always find, they always find, they find those players. Um, When I look at Birmingham Marion from an OA perspective, and I think this is one that you got to look at. If they are placed in a district with West Bloomfield, like they were this year, I don't think they match up very well because you have both, with West Bloomfield, you have both Davis sisters and you have both Hendrick sisters. They're back. They're back. And that, that's a very difficult matchup for Birmingham Murray. Um, And then let's say if they move West Bloomfield, they could move them west, you know what I mean? If they move them west to see the Walled Lakes and both, Walled, and both White Lake schools, that could be a possibility. And if Birmingham and Marion were in a district with, let's say, North Farmington, Bloomfield Hills, Groves, and Seaholm, I think they have a good chance to win that district. Now, I think Seaholm's going to be 
much improved. I mean, like, I know Chris Manchester's team really well. Um, I think when you look at if the, it, it, but if they're placed in a district of West Bluefield, that's going to be the most difficult one because of the fact that, you know, they played, um, West Bloomfield won that game against Birmingham Marine in the district final. Um, I mean, I just think that they got too much speed, too much quickness. Um, we'll see. I mean, West Bloomfield, I've heard from a lot of other pundits that they might be, they're favored again to repeat. <laughs> they're favored again. And, you know, and, and there's a good reason why they're favored to repeat again. Because of the fact that this T, you know, because of, you know, I mean, like, I just think when you look at that match, if it were to happen, um, I just don't know how Birmingham Marion, especially with a new coach, Michelle Lindsay, would match up against a Darren McAllister type program, and especially against both Davis sisters and both Hendrick sisters. That is going to be a really difficult matchup for for um, Birmingham Marion. But back to the hire. Um, the impact it does is from a postseason standpoint, it would not surprise me if a team like Rochester could play Birmingham Marion. It really wouldn't surprise me. I could just imagine that matchup. It would be a really interesting matchup um, if those two teams were to play. Um, the battle of star power between Swanson and um, Alice Mack and Kylie Robinson. Could you just imagine that matchup? Um, that would be a really interesting matchup if those two teams were to play. But I've been hearing rumblings about that possible matchup for a non-league game. That would be a really interesting non-league game. Um, when you look at when you look at when you look at the higher, obviously program strength wise, um, I think it's going to help Murray and Murray and you know with somebody within the program. If they would have went outside the box, I just think it, they would have started had to start over. Um, so. I do like the hire that with Lindsay over there, Birmingham Marion. I just think it's going to be, um, it just going to, for them, it's going to come down to is, is West Bloomfield going to be in their district or not? And I think that's the big question um, for me when it comes to Birmingham Marion is, are they going to be in the district? Um, I just think when you look at the, um, when you look at obviously teams in the OA, obviously that, you know, to keep a really close eye on. I mean, Bloomfield Hills, um, I still think they're maybe a year away. Um, but I think next year they're going to be very good. But uh, do I think are they going to be at the level of Burian Marion? Probably not. Um, Groves, obviously they got them. Caitlin Sanders there. Um, you know, they could give them some fits. Um, but I don't, I don't really know if I see them matching up pretty well with Birmingham Marion. Um, probably Seahome's the one I really would trust the most, um, because of, um, the experience he got back. I know Chris Manchester very well. Um, he will, he's done a really good job with that program at Seahome, really, really getting him into a, um, I mean, build And I think the thing with Manchester for me is for him is to, um, build program strength. That's still a little bit of a concern for me seeing him have two programs, um, but right now, those are the three teams right now that are in that Birmingham area that are likely going to see Birmingham Marion in the district. Um, West Bloomfield could be very interesting to see if they were in that district. Um, now, they could ship them west, as I mentioned earlier, um, with the Wall Lakes and um, the White Lake schools. Um, both White Lake schools, of course, are um, Lakeland and Milford. Um, that's always been a district in the past. Um, and then you look at, so I really think for Birmingham Marion until, until, you know, I mean, I'll let you know more when the districts come out in June. Um, I think that's going to be where you really look at with Birmingham Marion, um, to see where they're at going forward. I know, um, I know they've had a lot of success, um, Elsewhere within um, in um program hires, of course, Maya Cook was a um very interesting hire there for the volleyball program, and she's on a state title. But I just think this move, the Lindsay hire, makes the most sense um to bring a um to bring a um 
proven coach like her into the program to take over the heart varsity role, um, taking over for Cicerone. I know that's going to be really challenging. Taking over for a legend, that's really, that's always the hardest thing to do is taking over a program for a legend. That is the most difficult. And I know the challenges that she's going to have ahead of her. Um, but I just think with the program, with the girls that are in the program, I think the, the transition is going to be smooth. Um, um, you know, I mean, like, I just think, you know, at the end of the day here, you know, I, I think Lindsay's the right coach for this team. I think she is for the program. Played at Marion, played under, um, Cicerone. I, I just don't think that, um, I don't think she's going to change much. I don't think the structure is going to change much. Um, so tweak it, but I just don't think it's going to change much. So we'll see how that goes. And I think at the end of the day here, it's going to be, um, I, I think it's going to be a good hire. I mean, like now, do I think are they state title contender, state title contenders? Um, it's tell me that in June, especially with, um, if they're in a district with, or a regional with West Bluefield, um, that's going to be the team that a lot of people are going to be judged when it judges the Birmingham Marion. I think when I look at the Catholic League, I still think they're one of the best teams in that league. Um, obviously, when you look at um, Dearborn and Devon Child having an incredible year this year, um, la I mean this year, um, they could pose some problems. But right, but Farmington was Mercy. No, sorry, but Birmingham Marion actually knocked off um, Devon Child. You know, end up beating Mercy to win the um, Catholic League postseason tournament. Um, so I'm curious to see how Lindsay will handle, you know, the transition. I'm curious to see how that's going to go uh, when it comes to, um, you know, when it comes to that hire. So, you know, so I think it's a good hire for Birmingham Marion to see. Um, I think with the OAA, obviously, you know, the three teams that got to really pay attention are – both Birmingham schools, Groves and Seahome, and Bloomfield Hills, maybe West Bloomfield. Um, depends where the MHA puts them in June. So I think that's something to really watch for going forward. Um, let's go now from girls basketball news. Let's go to boys basketball. Um, obviously, when you look at, we have another coaching change. Um, of course, after we went on the air, off the air on a Monday, last week's podcast, um, we... Um, Heard the news that Darren Buchan Daryl Buchanan stepped down at Southfield Arts and Tech. Um, of course, Buchanan finished the year. I mean, Buchanan was there at A and T for four years. Um, with the he, um, when you look at it, he was forty one and thirty nine his four years. Um, he was twelve and twenty five ever since we um, ever since the pandemic, um, since sports started getting coming back. Um, a and T's been twelve and twenty five cents. Um, when you look at Buchanan, what he's done, um, first two years, A and T was twenty nine fourteen. I mean, ever since that Farmington, ever since that um, it was ever since that Farmington game, no, the Groves game where that changed everything. Um, you know they um. They haven't been the same team since that game. I mean, back in 2020, um, that was before the pandemic hit. Um, but we were in the almost in the midst of the state shutting down. Um, A and T hadn't been the same team since. I mean, when you look at since then, A and T was in the white in 2020. Last season, they were in the blue. I was shocked. To see, to be honest, I was honestly shocked to see A and T finish last in that division. Really shocked. Now I'm not knocking on the other teams here, but in that division, but I thought A and T, especially with the experience that they had, um, would do much better. I mean, the fact that they played against white competition and good competition and all that, um, I thought they would do better. But they really struggled, I mean, like, throughout. And, you know, so I don't know if it was Buchanan stepping down or if it was administration saying, like, maybe want to go a different direction with the program. Um, I don't know. But when you look at it here, something the last two years has not been right at, at A&T. 
And I know Buchanan has been very successful as a coach. He's been very successful. But I just think, you know, it was maybe a time for a change over there at a and And maybe, maybe it was. You know what I mean? I mean, yes, a and was very young this year. They were very, very young. But, but, you look at with A&T is, you know, you got, you got a lot of experience coming back. Um, I look at their schedule, you know, they played some teams that were, that were okay. I mean, like, I didn't think they were great, but they ended up having, um, but they ended up having some struggles. They did, though, in the postseason, knock off Farmington. And that was huge for them at the time, but they ran into a very good um, <laughs> Livonia Stevenson team, um, in the regional in the district semifinals. Of course, they fell in that game, um, which I was real. I thought Southfield had a good chance to at least get to the district final in that district that North Farmington, um, where it really wasn't that strong of a district, even though North Farmington's a really good team there. I mean, like, and I, I mean, like, but I just felt like a, I just felt like A and T had a good chance to get there. Um, and surprised how they lost that one to Livonia Stevenson, um, in that one. But um, but just really surprised with A and T. I thought they would do much better in the blue. Um, but you know, just really surprised. You, this, I mean, finishing with seven fifteen record, um, six and fourteen in the um. Overall, I mean, like, just really, really surprised how that ended up going down. Um, but like I said, I mean, like, this is really interesting because with a and I, I really don't know where to go with them. I mean, I don't know where to go with them because you look at, when you look at the other three coaching vacancies at Bloomfield Hills, Stony Creek, and Groves, um, they got program strengths. I mean, all three of them do. Um, obviously, Bloomfield Hills, you look at, obviously, you Noah know, Adam Trich coming back, Derek Lee, CJ Jackson, um, Brandon Newellen, um, in the post. I mean, like, you know, and then they got, um, Derek Lee coming up the ranks from the Vars, from the JV level. Um, they got a pretty good freshman core coming up. Um, Grove, same thing, obviously, but, Groves, of course, you lose two very good players, and um, Aaron DeBose and Nick Lertz. That's going to be a huge loss for them. Um, and but they got some good pieces coming up, especially from that JV program. Um, and then Stony Creek, obviously, you know, this year was a pretty down year for them, but but their program strength is on the rise as well. So, but with A and T, I just don't know where the direction is with this program. I just don't know, and I think you know that's going to be. The difficult part. I'm not being mean to you here. It's just, it's they're in a very difficult spot because considering, you know, the fact that this has been a program that they used to be in the red. Um, they were in the red for a while. Then they went down to the white. Um, then last year went to the blue. Now they're in the gold. So this is basically a program I wouldn't say that's near rock bottom, but pretty close um, because of the record, the last two years, you know, the last two years. So when you really look at it with a t you know, whoever the new coach is, is going to have, they're going to have experience coming back. That's a huge deal. But when you look at the gold, um, obviously you got Harper Woods in there. I think Harper Woods is going to be your toughest challenger in that division. Um, Avondale's, uh, Avondale's always solid. Um, Pontiac, you know, they got a very good player in Davion Hall. Um, so, but when you really look at it, the team that gives probably the biggest, and Ferndale University is, um, is a much improved program under Coach Josh Nix. So, Ferndale University is another team that's a dark horse team. So when you look at with A and T, you know you think, okay, going now on the gold, it's going to be easy. No, it's not. You got Harper Woods, Ferndale University, Avondale, Pontiac are all in that division. That's going to be a good division. 
It'll be a good division. But I'm curious to see how A&T can, like, build things back up. I'm really curious to see it. Because the last few years, they've been going on a downward trend here. So when you really look at it with A&T, they got to get a coach in there that can, one, you know, get more out of these players. Two, build program strength. Because obviously, you know, with Southfield basketball, you know, this is unusual territory for them. It's very unusual territory. People are going to say, well, this team's hit rock bottom. I mean, if they do, if, if that's rock bottom, you know, you know, then there's nowhere to go but up for them. There's nowhere to go but up. My challenge to A&T is this, you know, you know, if you want to make some noise, you know what I mean? You got to, you got to go in there and prove it. You got to go prove it night in, night out, you know, and the numbers prove it. The numbers prove it, you know, and, you know, when you're 12 and 25 the last two years, you know, didn't expect, did not expect this from A&T. Program strength is a big, big concern with a &T. It really is. I mean, you know, and that, I mean, like, and that is, that is going to be the big question mark for a &T is, can you get a coach who is not only a, not only, you know, could it be a local product from Southfield? Sure. It can. I mean, like, I think it can. I mean, like, um. I think if you get a local product in there, you know, somebody who knows the system at A&T, um, I think that would be a really, I think it'd be a great hire because, you know, you think about it, you know what I mean? If you, I think it'd be a good one. I think it would be, but that's not my, that's not my decision or anything to make, but I think for A&T right now, if they can get a guy who can build on program strengths, um, you know, develop the kids, you know what I mean? Basically, um, you know, I think they it won't be long for them to make the moves up from the gold to the blue to the white and eventually the red, you know? There's talent at Southfield. There is enough talent at Southfield, you know, to say, you know, I mean, we can, if we can, it depends, it's got to be the right person there, whoever it is. and. I think that's the big question. It's got to be the right person there. Because, I mean, Daryl Buchanan did a really good job with A&T in his four years. He did a really good job. You know, the first two years were very good. Last two years, not so much. But, you know, I, but to his defense, he had a very young team this year. He had a very young group, you know, that's trying to learn the game of basketball. Um... You know, and then they've had some, they had some good wins, though. They've knocked out Troy Athens. That was a good win for them at the time. Um, but they've had some really tough losses, um, obviously. So, whoever the new coach is over there, A&T, um, you know, one thing they got to do is, you know, develop a relationship with the current players in the program, and then... You know, write down their goals. You know what I mean? You know, league championship, district championship, regional championship. You know, I think a and it's a good job, you know what I mean, to have. It's a really good job to have. I mean, but I just think, you know, maybe a systematic change could be in line over there. But when you look at the other coaching vacancies with Stony Creek, um, um, West, um, Stony Creek, um, Bloomfield Hills and Groves. I mean, like, I just think when you look at, I when you look at those three jobs. I mean, like, they have a um, they, I mean, like, you know, Bloomfield Hills. They got a superstar player in Adam Chich, very good sporting cast. Um, program strength is there. Um, I think with A and T, it's gonna be more of a building, a little bit of a rebuild, a little bit over there. Um, especially when it comes to program strengths. Um, so I'm very curious to see where a and goes, um, with their hire. Um, um, very curious to see where they go. 
Um, being in the gold, I think, will help them, even though they're going to deal with Harper Woods, Ferndale University, uh, Avondale, and Pontiac. Um, and then, and then honestly, playing your non-conference, um, I think that's the beauty of having 20, 22 games this year. Um, you get to play in a lot more tournaments. You get to play in a lot more, you know, you get to play in a lot more um, non-league games. But that's going to be for the new coach to decide. So when you really look at <laughs> A&T in their situation, um, I think of all, of all the four schools who are looking for new coaches right now, um, if I had to grade the um, coaching jobs right now, I'd say Bloom Bay Hills right now is the top. Followed by Grove, followed by Stony Creek, then Groves and Southfield. Um, but that's just my suggestions. I mean, like I know everybody's subject to their own opinions, and I know I am as well. But, but you know, but I just think when you look at A and T, I mean, like I just think going a different direction, I think will help this team going forward. I mean, the fact that the last few years it's not been very good, and the numbers prove it. You know what I mean? and the numbers prove it, that's the bottom line, is you got to look at, obviously, with A&T. Um, that is something to really, really keep an eye on there. Um, let's go now from basketball news. Obviously, of course, that has been the big story here. Um, let's go to some um, previews of the week, obviously. When you look at... Um, when you look at... When you look at, of course, um, some teams I'm keeping an eye on to watch this summer, obviously, you look at, obviously, the AU circuits that have been going on in the basketball world. Um, but, you know, it's got me, remind me a little bit of, obviously, when you look at other sports, I mean, lacrosse, obviously. Um, I'm looking forward to that big Clarkson Lake Orion matchup um, in lacrosse. Um, that could be for a league title. Um, Lake Orion, I know, has been without Andrew Parker. That's been a huge loss for them. Um, um, obviously, that is going to be for the league title there. Clarkson's having a really nice year. Um, when you look at other, um, I'm looking at right now, I'm looking at the um, top teams in the state of Michigan, the, the um, state rankings for the week. Um, I think when you look at the state rankings for the week, um, obviously, um, that's something to really watch for. Um, I'm pulling it up right now here. Um, so when I look at... Um, so I'm looking at, I'm looking at the rankings right now. I'm looking at obviously um, baseball, um, the top teams in the state right now as of, um, you know, they of course they're releasing that Lake Orion right now sits at 14 right now in the OAA when it comes to state rankings. But watch out for Adams. I really think Adams is a team that I'm really high on. I like both Pico brothers there. Um, obviously that's you know, but right now when I look at the top the top um, 20 teams in the state right now. Um, the OAA, Lake Orion, right now ranked 14th in the state um, right now in baseball. Um, softball, obviously, um, I'm looking at the top teams right now. Um, they haven't really updated the rankings. Um, but I'm still watch for Clarks, watch for Stony Creek, Farmington, um, Clarkston, Lake Orion, Oxford. Obviously, those are the teams to really watch for in the state. Um, there in softball, um, honorable mention, of course, um, haven't been list named up there. Um, and then, um, let's see here, um, let's see here, um, boys lacrosse, obviously, when you look at the rankings there as of March 25th, um, of course, um, Clarkson ranked third in the state. Stony Creek is actually ranked eighth in the state in lacrosse. I mean, boys lacrosse, I mean, like. Stony Creek's having an incredible year. I mean, like in the in boys lacrosse. I mean, haven't really expected to see that. Obviously, I mean, like you know, but I just think you know. Um, I know Lake Orion's had their injury issues. Um, Lake Orion, you know, they've had a lot of injury issues. So I still think you know at Clarkson Lake Orion game. That's a huge game. That'll be really interesting to watch. Um, to really keep an eye on. Um, on the boys side of things. Um. To really, really watch. Um, girls lacrosse. Um, in girls lacrosse, um, obviously, um, Lake Orion's been ranked in the state. Um, 
and girls across. I mean, like, that's something to really watch for. They're seventh in the state right now. Bloompy Hills is eighth in the state. I know Bloompy Hills and Lake Orion played. Um, that was a 14 9 win for Bloompy Hills over Lake Orion. Um, you know, and then Birmingham United's been kind of strong a little bit. I'm a little surprised about that. Um, but I still think right now, I still think it's 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 a three team race between Lake Orion, Bloompy Hills, and Birmingham United. Um, really to watch for there. Um, soccer, I mean, like in girls' soccer, I'm really curious to see how um in girls' soccer, obviously, that is really, really loaded right now when you look at the teams there. Um, obviously you got Rochester, Adams, and Stony Creek. Um, you know, the way that all three of those teams have been playing. Um, Athens still ranked fourth in the state. Um, you know, Rochester, Stony Creek, and Adams are in that conversation as well. But I think it may be time to Put maybe um you got Oxford in there, Sea Homes in there, in that conversation. In the blue, obviously you got um North Farmington is in is it is right there in that mix as well in the blue. Um, and then and then obviously you know I think when you look at coming in the postseason and that's coming up pretty soon, so that'll be really interesting to keep an eye on going forward there. Um, you know, girls soccer. Um. Track and field, we mentioned earlier. Um, obviously, you know, you got, I mean, like, um, I'm looking at the state rankings, and, you know, unfortunately, there's no OA teams ranked, but I think Lake Orion needs to be in there, um, especially the way they've been playing the last few weeks, especially in the boys' side. They got enough balance. Um, I think it's me, it's time to give Lake Orion their fair share of, um, respect within the state. Um, you know, so I really think the Dragons, in my opinion, if they're not in the state rankings in um boys track, then something's seriously wrong. Um, girls track, obviously Oxford. Um, we mentioned about them earlier. Obviously, this they're. I'm a little surprised, you know, when I look at the rankings, Oxford's not in there. Um, you know, I mean, like the way they've been playing, they're they're a ranked team in the state, in my opinion. Um, so. You know, really, and then, of course, we got the tennis rankings, obviously. And, obviously, when you look at tennis, um, you know, of course, they've, um, so I'm looking at, actually, um, actually got the long tennis here. It's, um, girls tennis, my bad. Um, so when I look at the tennis rankings, um, obviously, Bloompia Hills, number two right now. Um, and then followed by, um. Stony Creek, you know, I mean, they're in that combo. Clarkson's in that combo as well. Um, and then Division Two, Sea Home Groves, um, they're ranked there in the top teams in the state in tennis. So that's something to really watch for going forward. There, they could be some players as well. Um, and then, and then we have golf. I mean, like obviously, um, and then we have golf. I mean, like, um, and then, um. Yeah, and then we have golf. I mean, obviously, um, when you look at golf, um, it's going to be, um, I apologize for my, um, you know, looking at, because I'm actually looking at the standings like everybody is here right now. It doesn't look like it has golf yet, but if, um, if it does, um, I'll let you know on it. But I just think, but when you look at golf, obviously, Adams really stands out. Um, so that's something to really, really watch for going forward. Um, my final thoughts is, um, you know, the week, obviously. So that's my spring sports update, um, right now. When you look at the state rankings in tennis, um, obviously that's something to really, really watch for, um, going forward. So my final thoughts here this week are going to be, um, uh, my final thoughts this week, obviously, um, keep chugging along. You know what I mean? Everybody, you know what I mean? Just keep chugging along. We're going to be fine. Um. You know, we'll see what happens going forward. All right, now, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Um, make sure you stay on the blog at see it at, um, at um, Agon Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Um, we're on the, um, the OA. We're going to keep an eye on everything, especially the coaching searches over at um, at um, Bloomfield Hills, Grove, Stony Creek, and Southfield Arts and Tech. Also, postseason coming up pretty soon, so we're going to post those up in a little while on the blog as well, so we're going to preview those during the podcast. Also, keep an eye on the track and field updates as well. So, we'll see what happens going forward. Um, all right, everybody, I'm going to sign off here. Um, 
Take care. God bless. And see you all next week, everybody. Take care and see you. See you next week, everybody.